Good morning. Today we're looking at section 2, numerical derivatives and limits, out of chapter 3, rate of change in derivatives, out of business calculus with Excel. One of the key concepts of calculus is the derivative of a function. We have three ways of understanding the derivative, an intuitive understanding, a calculator approximation, and a formal definition. You'll be responsible for all three. The intuitive understanding is that if you take almost any reasonable graph and zoom in far enough, the graph will look like a straight line. The derivative is the slope of that line. The calculator definition says 0.001 is generally far enough to have zoomed in to make it look like a straight line. So we're going to approximate the derivative as the change in y going back and forth by 0.001 divided by the change in x. The formal definition understands we may need to have smaller than 0.001 for our change. So the derivative is the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. In this course, the formal definition will mainly be used finding the derivative at a particular point. We'll want to set up templates that let us graph a function and a derivative together. The template works for easy or complicated functions. So we're going to use the calculator definition and look at derivatives before we have rules for derivatives. For nice functions, we can use trend lines and try to get formulas for the derivative. As is my normal practice, I'll follow the structure of the text, but not do the same examples. Videos of the text examples are already attached to the text. So we're looking at derivatives. First of all, I'm going to look at the derivative at a point, and I've set up this page so that if we look at the formulas, I have my form, my x's are going from a starting point in the middle. So we start 10 steps off. I have this set up. So I start, I want delta x to be in the middle. I'm going to start 10 steps before that. So I have 10 copies of delta x back. I add a delta x at each time. I take the function, evaluated it there. The secant line, I'm going to look at the slope of the secant line. I have f of x and f of delta x, f of x plus delta x. That gives me a delta y. It gives me a slope. I'm going to go up and down by delta x in each case. The main idea of this again is I'm looking at a function and a secant line connecting two points and drawing a straight line. The idea was that I can make delta x smaller, 0 0.1, and when I do, it looks more like a straight line. I'm going to make it smaller still, 0 0.01. It now really looks like a straight line. I can barely see the blue underneath the gold. I make it still smaller, 0 0.001, and I can't distinguish between the secant line and the original graph of the function. I would then take the slope 4.001 and that's my approximation for the derivative. If we want to look at a simple function, I'm going to like, I would like to see the function and the derivative graph together and graphed at all those points. So I'm going to use a template. I'm going to start with minus 10 to minus 9 normal practice, I'm going to graph from minus 10 to 10. I want x plus 0.001 plus 0.001, x minus 0.001. My function is, I'm going to have as my simple function x squared minus 2x, and so my function is equal to a5 squared minus 2 times a5. The reason for doing my normal lineup is now I simply drag across and it's going to use the formulas on x plus 0 0.001 and x minus 0 0.01. My top is going to be f of x plus 0 
minus f of x minus 0 0.001. My bottom is equal to 2 times whatever delta x is. And um, my bottom is 2 times 0 0.001. I'm going to use the calculator definition. I want my derivative to be the top divided by the bottom. And now with this done, I can do quick fill down. I have a pattern for this. So I'm going to go from minus 10 to about 10. And now the thing I would like to see is the graph I want x that's going to be kept in. I want to see f of x and I want to see f prime of x. And I'm going to insert a scatter plot, make it a marked scatter plot. And so once again, I'm seeing f of x and f prime of x on the same graph together. One of the advantages of the template is I can take this template for the simple function, copy and paste in. And now when I look at my formula, if I take a more complicated function like x to the fourth minus 4x cubed, plus 2x squared minus 7. That's a relatively complicated function. I'm going to look at f of x and say I need to do this new function, making sure I have pluses in the right place and minus in the right place. So I'm going to take my function and this should be f of x it should be x to the fourth minus 4x cubed times a5 cubed plus 2 times a5 minus 7. And I've entered that for f of x. I'm going to drag it down with the magic of quick fill. I'm going to look at my formulas a second and say to move the formulas to evaluate them at x plus 0.01 and x minus 0.01, I simply move it across. This means the same basic template that I used before, I can now use and do it with a more complicated function. So one of the advantages of the calculator definition is with this setup, we simply use it and this lets us find a derivative for almost any function we want. Once again, I could take it and I look at it and say I'd like to graph f and f prime together. I'd like to insert a marked scatter And this gives me the function and the derivative together. Um, I would look at this and say I'm going to be interested in what's going to happen at particular places here. I'm also going to notice that where we have zeros in the derivative, those are going to correspond to places where the function changes direction. And those will be interesting places that we'll study as we go further on. Again, one of the advantages is I can see the function together. So I've picked now what happens if I simply take a quadratic polynomial with a, b, and c, and I'd like to look at what happens. Can I guess what the derivative function is? So I'm going to graph x, f of x, and f prime of x. Once again, I'm going to insert a trend line. I mean, I'm going to insert a marked scatter plot. And now I look at it and say, I'd like to have the formula for that. 
Well, I find the formula by inserting a trend line, and the trend line looks to me like it's linear. I'd like to display the equation on the chart. This gives me the equation on the chart. I'd like to move it and make it a bigger size so I can read it more easily. I'm going to make it 14 point type. So it was 6x minus 5 when I had 3x minus 5. So my polynomial was 3x squared minus 5x plus 7. I want to see what happens if I change the 7 to 23. It's changed the numbers for x and for f of x, but notice the formula for the derivative has stayed the same. So that didn't have any impact. If I change minus 5 to 12, notice that that number here changed from minus 5 to 12 as well. So it looks like d is going to show up as the constant on the derivative. And if I change 3 to minus 5, my slope changed from 6 to minus 10. So it looks like this is twice whatever a was. So this is giving us a hint that we're going to eventually produce formulas for the derivative. But using the trend lines, I simply said, I'm going to plot the derivative, the function, and the bunch of points of the derivative. That looks like a line. Give me the formula. That's all for today. Thank you.